Let's continue. Now we will um, hear um, Dr. Matthias Bossart. He's a senior interventional cardiologist uh, in Lucerne and uh, also a very skilled operator. Um, he um, likes to do um, a lot of um, CTOs and um, since uh, some years he likes to treat CTOs with drug balloons. So let's hear what cases he has prepared. Matthias, please. Uh, thank you, Florence. Th thank you very much for the nice introduction. And for the, um, I've actually prepared a little bit less in illustrative um, presentation than you just had, but I'm gonna. I hope I can convince some of the um, attending um, audience or cardiologists uh, to more frequently use drug coated balloons. Uh, in cases with CTOs in the near future. And I'd like to give you some content, provide you some insights, which are important if you manage patients with drug-coated balloons who have uh, CTOs. Okay, I'd like to start with a brief case vignette. Um, it's a 55-year-old, a uh, 50-year-old gentleman who has a history of a chronic coronary syndrome who has actually been treated by, by Florim. Um, he had a history of PCI to the LAD and RCA seven years earlier. Uh, here on the short um, angiogram, you can appreciate that he had a stent in the prox LAD, which wasn't too bad at that time. Um, and actually, he presented to our side uh, with progressive shortness of breath and some mild angina. And on the angiogram, we figured out, or actually Florian figured out, that he had now occluded uh, mid LAD, as you can appreciate here on the angiogram. Um, and the question actually comes up, how would you manage that? And um, we might discuss that a little, bit late, um, a little bit more later. And I guess most of you can already um, appreciate how we manage that. Okay. But to give you some context, um, first of all, we, you need to be, uh, what do you need to know about CTO lesions? Um, CTO lesions actually uh, represent a growing a uh, case burden to all the cath lab globally. And in fact, approximately 20% of all patients who've been referred to for angiography have CTOs, more so in patients who present with that, who have been dealing with diabetes or heart failure. There, the prevalence is even higher. Uh, there has been some registries, uh, data, registry data which showed that up to 40% of all patients have CTO lesions. And more importantly, that the prevalence of CDO lesions increases with advancing age. And uh, the symptoms which most of those patients have is, are actually not uh, just angina, but the majority of those patients present with shortness of breath and exercise intolerance. Uh, and there's also a still a limited adoption of CTO PCI. And um, since uh, many interventionalists still feel afraid to um, conquer those lesions or don't feel comfortable to treat them, and uh, many CTO lesions remain untreated, or patients with CTO lesions are still unnecessarily sent for cabbage. Um, and with the advances uh, in techniques and materials within the last decade, uh, and also the increased operator experience, the success rate of CTO PCI has tremendously evolved. And uh, expert CTO operators now have success rates beyond 90%, uh, up to 95%. And I'm sure that those um, rates will further increase in the upcoming uh, next years. The question is actually, why should we treat the CTO? As we know, there is uh, conflicting data and there has been the, just recently a trial co called ischemia, which brought some um, discourse to the whole topic. But the reality is that many patients suffer despite optimal medical treatment and uh, CTO PCA has been, been proven to be effective for symptoms management. It also has been proven to be improve LV function. And also it has some consequences for uh, future ACS presentation, meaning open arteries uh, prevent patients uh, from uh, worse outcomes if in case they have a concomitant, uh, they have a, a ACS in the future. And also it has been shown that patients who had undergone uh, CTO PCI have a lower risk for ventricular arrhythmias. And uh, by doing CTO PCIs, you might 
defer um, uh, a cabbage procedure. And down there, as I mentioned, uh, CTO patients might use um, less nitrates or less meds in the near future. And the, the reality for us as interventional cardiologists is you, on one side, you help the patient, but you also uh, improve your PCI skills. So, so basically it comes down to that, that you always have to um, uh, wiggle the pros and cons of on the, sending a patient for, to a PCI procedure. You always need to well inform the patient about potential uh, periprocedural complications, but you also, and that's actually important here, it's a very nice paper which has recently been published, and you also should inform the patient about the increased risk of target lesion failure down the road because it's still a reality that patients who undergo CTO-PCI with stent implantation have a higher risk for stent thrombosis, but also re uh, in comparison to common or more simple um, PCI procedures. Um, the outcomes of patients who undergo CTO-PCI with contemporary drug-eluting stents um, aren't that bad, but there is actually quite a bit of room uh, for improvement. This is a, um, the data, that's the data from the recently published expert CTO trial. It's a multi-center trial which assessed the performance of uh, an Averroismus eluting stent in patients who undergo CTO PCI. And uh, I show, I uh, picked this slide here to highlight how high the target vessel failure rate is in those patients who, and that's, that's uh, out, those are the outcomes after one year. And you can see there has actually uh, a tar been a target vessel failure of up to 16%, which I consider very high. And uh, basic, that's a signal which has been reproduced by other studies as well. And we need to be, take that into account when we manage patients with CTO lesions and drug contemporary drug eluting stents. The pathological hallmarks of CTO lesions include the seven uh, following points. Those lesions uh, have usually a high burden of atherosclerotic plaque. They have a tough fibrous cap, which also often is very calcified, and they have a softer part in the um, middle section of the lesion. And those calcification and fibrotic parts increase with advancing age of the CTO lesions. CTO lesions are usually very long. They're uh, longer uh, than 30 millimeters and the vessel distal to the lesion is usually diffusely diseased and the, the uh, vessel size um, at the distal end of the lesion is actually collapsed and uh, you can't really appreciate, often you can't really appreciate the full extent of the vessel. And what we also need to take in account that CTO lesions usually lead to a slower and thinner endothelial coverage of stent struts once those lesions have been treated with contemporary drug eluting stents. And that's actually important uh, if you think about long-term outcomes of those lesions after stent placement. So basically, um, the consequences which we should take in account um, after treating a CTO lesion with PCI is that, um, the, which, which what I just mentioned, that those lesions are long. Therefore, we would have to place a, a long stent or uh, those lesions actually tend to uh, positively remodel once you've opened up the vessel, meaning at the Time point once you open the vessel, the distal part of the vessel will actually not have its uh, final size. And this actually makes stent sizing very uh, difficult and uh, it often leads to malaposition or undersizing. And uh, this directly leads to the question is there actually, um, uh, that's what actually at the room where. Um, Drug coating balloons could uh, be very helpful in those lesions. And also, um, often you have to place uh, drug looting st or stents in extra luminal. Um, in an extra luminal room, which also limits appropriate sizing. And um, there is also uh, the question if that's um, a, an option to use a drug coating balloon there and not having a stent, which uh, ultimately uh, ends up being malaposed and undersized. 
Uh, as you are well aware, there is a growing body of evidence for using drug-coated balloons in coronary artery disease. The, the, that's the just recently published uh, long-term outcomes of the Basket Small study. In that study, a uh, paclitaxel eluting balloon has been compared to um, the taxes and science stands, and it showed non-inferiority of drug-coating balloons in um, small vessels. And uh, there, those results have been reproduced or actually uh, other studies have pointed towards uh, similar directions. But what we need to take into account that in those studies, or especially in the basket small study, CTO lesions actually have been underrepresented or have in some studies, um, CTO lesions have been an exclusion criteria for the use of drug-coated balloon. So, uh, but the reality is, if you think about this and, and from a logical standpoint, and um, there is actually a lot of potential for drug-coating balloons and CTO lesions. First of all, you leave the vessel uncaged, as I just mentioned. After CTO PCI, the vessel tends to grow over time. We now have some evidence for uh, DCBs in especially small vessels. So uh, it's logic that those findings or those results could actually also be translated to CTO lesions. Uh, by using a hybrid strategy, meaning combining drug coating balloons and drug eluting stents, maybe just use a drug eluting stent at the occlusion site or at the site where you uh, deal with a very calcified uh, lesion, uh, you could actually spare some stents and prevent un unnecessary stent placement. Uh, over time, uh, also, uh, this allows to keep the, um, the duration of uh, dual antiplatelet therapy shorter. And we also need to take into account that um, by not implanting stents, you mitigate the risk for late stent thrombosis, uh, which is still a concern with contemporary drug eluting stents, especially after managing drug, um, after managing uh, chronic total occlusion. We've been using um, drug coating, various drug coating balloons in CTOs for quite some time now. There, that's an abstract which we um, are going to publish hopefully soon. And we, we've collected um, the 61 most recently treated patients uh, who have undergone CTO PCI at our site. And we found that uh, 47 of those cases have been treated with a solution drug coated balloon, the average and uh, the mean. Uh, JCDO score wasn't that high, it was just 8, 1.8, and, uh, but uh, and those patients have a follow-up for approximately 6.7 months now, and but the results are actually quite, what I consider quite promising, and we found in those uh, lesions or in those cases that only three patients had a target lesion failure, whereas only one patient was actually symptomatic and, um, um, and required uh, urge or actually urgent management, and we had no acute uh, vessel closure. And those were actually, so as you can see here on the right side, because some of those lesions were rather long, and we uh, used an average more than two drug coated balloons. And um, therefore, I think there is actually quite some room for use of drug coating balloons in CTO lesions, but there is still, again, room for improvement, and we need to learn some more how to um, prepare those lesions and in which situations we need to use a hybrid approach or uh, where we should actually avoid use a stent. Um, this approach or using um, drug coating balloons in CTO lesions hasn't been just done by our side, but other sites, uh, there, has been, there have been quite a few publications. Uh, most of them are smaller studies, single arm studies, registry data, or even ret uh, uh, um, retrospective data. That's a, a publication which has been published um, in International Journal of Cardiology. It has been published by a German group. And they actually analyzed 34 patients who have been treated with uh, paclitaxel eluding balloons. And I picked this um, study because I was actually a bit of, um, uh, astonished when I saw the high rate of restenosis, which was up to almost 12%. And then when I looked into the data, I realized or I noted that they haven't been using appropriate lesion preparation. And therefore, I'm convinced uh, if you can 
if you prepare the bed well or if you prepare the lesion well, that you can actually improve your outcomes and you can uh, um, achieve similar results as we, as we have found in our small registry so far. So by moving on, as Florin mentioned, and I um, would say uh, I absolutely agree and uh, we are uh, in line in that point. Uh, if you use DCBs irrespective of the kind of lesion you manage and, and more though, but more though in CTOs, it's key to vigorously prepare the lesion. So uh, as I always like to say, use intravascular imaging if possible, use dedicated tools, use through non-compliant balloons, avoid semi-compliant balloons. If necessary, use cutting balloons, scoring balloons, rotor shockwave, but invest a lot in lesion preparation. And as Flora mentioned, crack the calcium, downsize the diameter, upsize the pressure, and don't be afraid of dissections. Uh, there are several ways to deal with them. You can actually tuck them where, uh, by using prolonged balloon inflations with the DCBs, or if necessary, just use a short balloon, uh, short stand to cover it. And uh, on the right side, you can see the recommendations from that consensus paper, which I just mentioned earlier, and they. Uh, they're recommended there to use standard semi-compliant balloons for um, DCB, PCI. Uh, that's something which I strongly disagree or uh, not encourage at all. And also, I'm not so keen about um, the balloon to vessel ratio of one to one for lesion preparation. Uh, it would be there a little bit more conservative. And um, ba but basically, um, if you're... Um, once you've treated the lesion and actually you don't have a flow limiting dissection um, and uh, or a residual stenosis of less than 30%, I'm very comfortable that the vessel will stay open. Okay, now coming back, as you're well aware, we decided uh, very early in the course to avoid the stent because we were well aware that uh, that's a very long lesion and by um, Using a stent, you would actually omit um, P cabbage for this rather young patient at any point down the street or down the road. And um, therefore, um, Florim actually treated that patient very well or very nicely with um, two drug coating balloons and achieved a very nice result. Here you can see the final angiogram, and here you can see on the right the four month follow up. And as Okay, I apologize for the background noise. Okay, okay. That's, and now I'm coming to my um, take home messages. Um, CTO hallmarks, which you need to be aware of, those are lung lesions, fibrocalcific caps. Uh, they have a softer body in, the, um, in between, which actually allows very nicely to treat that, those lesions with drug coating balloons. DCB and CTO, um, adequate lesion preparation is key. Early data uh, from our side and other studies uh, implicates feasibility and safety of DCBs and CTO lesions, but certainly there is room for more data. And actually, there's actually um, already, there has a, a study been launched, a, a randomized trial for a use of uh, DCBs, contemporary DCBs in CTO lesions and then keen to learn more about that technology in uh, the near future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you uh, very much, Matthias. Uh, maybe there is some questions um, from um, the other people who don't work with Matthias, because I see him every day and can ask questions every day. Fantastic. That was a great presentation. Uh, obviously, the um, the role of drug coated balloon is expanding and could be applied to, to complex lesion. So my question is, um, in chronic total occlusion, the, the, the study you presented, are they consecutive patients or you decide on the drug coated balloon after the, NGO, after the balloon result? Uh, would you like to comment on that? Mm -hmm. Back and um, so from our um, registry, we're actually the, the, those were consecutive patients who have been treated with um, uh, um, CTO. 
uh, CTO cases we've been treated with TCPs at our site. Uh, basically, Florian, please correct me, but uh, whenever, so I would say nowadays, whenever we do a PCI, we have in mind that we could basically use a draw coating balloon, irrespective of the vessel size, uh, if it's not a STEMI. Whenever possible, I actually, I, I've stopped using semi-compliant balloons for um, uh, lesion preparations many years ago, or actually once I've arrived in Lucerne. And um, whenever, and now it's over the last two years, whenever I do, I do a PCI, I actually aim for use a drug coating balloon. I think Florian agrees with me on that. He has a similar approach. First, and um, therefore we basically always use non-compliant balloons, uh, do aggressive lesion preparation, and also in CTO lesions, it's the same. Like whenever possible, we would aim for use of a drug coating balloon. Yeah, I mean, maybe I can add. So uh, the good thing is that, um, and this is the, the mindset we said, which has changed by also seeing this, long-term or longer-term results after four months, five months, seven months, eight months, we see the angiograms and we see how oh, this is working. Because in the beginning, you don't have the, the, um, the confidence that this is going to work for your patients, but now we have. So whenever we see a patient, we always discuss, can we treat this with drug routing balloon only? That would be ideal. Or can we do a hybrid case? So sometimes we are disappointed that we just put only stents and don't use a drug routing balloon. But this has changed. I mean, one year ago, this was not, this has changed with solution, I have to say, because we we, um, we see those results, which give us the confidence to continue on this journey. And the, the great thing also is that by learning from each other, by showing the case to the, each other, this is also, um, you know, because if you just put stents every, every day, one, one day it becomes boring. So now for us, this has opened a new, uh, new challenge in our daily life. And besides um, other things which are also challenging, but this is, this is something new. So I think I would, I would, um, um, you know, I would, whenever maybe uh, uh, trips to our lab can be organized to, um, um, to see us and work with us, and maybe um, we will do some workshops also, also with uh, Med Alliance. We always we already do with CIS Medical. So um, and come and see us and, and discuss. I, I like this interaction. This is why uh, why we are uh, here and trying to to exchange our experiences.